virtualization preface content of this lecture we will discuss virtualization technology its importance benefits different models used for virtualization and the key approaches to the virtualization with respect to the cpu memory and device virtualization is a part of this lecture what is virtualization virtualization is originated in the year late that is 1960s at ibm so it's not a new concept so virtualization allows concurrent execution of multiple operating systems and their applications on the same physical machine so in this example you can see here that there is there is one piece of hardware that is cpu memory disk and devices this particular piece of hardware if it is being used by more than one applications and its corresponding operating systems then this particular way of sharing the common hardware across multiple such machines which are the virtual machines so this will allow the concurrent execution of multiple operating systems and also their application simultaneously over a same piece of hardware so this is possible using the virtualization so virtualization allows the concurrent execution of multiple operating systems on the same physical machine so this is a physical machine and now it has multiple virtual machines that means operating system its application and its virtual resources together is called a virtual machine so what becomes the virtual resources so here each operating system thinks that it owns the entire hardware resources so these hardware resources this operating system which is called a guest operating system thinks that it owns these hardware resources similarly the other guest operating system and there may be many more such virtual machines residing and concurrently executing simultaneously they think that this hardware they owns and if they thinks this way then it is called the virtual resources so the physical resources are being shared that is why they are called virtual resources now the concept of a virtual machine is that a set of operating system which is called a guest operating system and the application which runs on that corresponding operating system and the virtual resources together is called the virtual machine so this particular several operating systems will now be accessing the same piece of hardware so that means these guest operating system will view either they have own this entire resources or some part of the resources which are available as a part of the physical machine so there is a requirement which is called the virtualization layer or you can also think of an operating system of several operating systems so operating system is required which will basically provide the physical resources to be shared across multiple operating systems and 
this particular operating system of operating systems is called basically the virtualization layer. So, virtualization layer is also called as hypervisor or virtual machine monitor. So, the virtualization layer or hypervisor or virtual machine monitor is nothing but an operating system of operating systems. So, operating systems of the virtual machine requires to be managed by or requires to be supported by this virtualization layer that is the hypervisor. Similarly, this operating system or which is called a virtualization layer or a hypervisor will use these uh, hardware or will manage the physical hardware resources and will provide the virtualized view to the several operating systems which are called a guest operating systems. Defining the virtualization, a virtual machine is an efficient isolation of the duplicate of the real machine. So, here you can see that this particular virtual machine will duplicate the real physical machine. So, this is to be done in an isolate in an efficient manner. So, virtual machine is an efficient isolated duplicate of the real machine which is supported by the virtual machine monitor or the hypervisor. This particular virtual machine monitor or the hypervisor will provide the environment that is essentially identical with the original machine. So, all the resources which are available as part of the physical machine will that means these guest operating system will have an illusion as if they basically are owning these, uh, these physical resources and that particular illusion is being supported by the virtual machine monitor or an hypervisor. In other sense, this particular illusion is to be done or is to be achieved in a real sense. In the sense, it is a copy of all the physical resources will be available as a part of the virtual resources to the guest operating systems. Hence, the one of the important goals of virtual machine monitor is fidelity. The second goal of virtual machine monitor is that the programs show at worst only the minor decrease in the speed. So, for example, these resources are being shared across several guest operating systems. So, not all resources are available to these guest operating systems which are available as far as the physical machine is concerned, physical resources, but some part of the physical resources are available. Hence, this particular way the programs will have only a small decrease in the speed because the full resources are not available, rather full resources are shared across the resources. Hence, the performance also is one of the requirement that there will be a efficient or a good performance in doing so, that is in sharing the resources across several operating systems. Now, the third one which is supported is basically that virtual machine monitor is in the complete control of the physical resources. That means, if it is not done in that manner, then these operating guest operating system may interfere the use of these physical resources with the other guest operating systems. Hence, a complete isolation and safety is also the third important requirement of the virtual machine monitor or the hypervisor. So, basically the virtual machine monitor will take the full control and then makes the decision of a controlled access of these resources to or across these guest operating systems to ensure the safety and also ensures the isolation across different virtual machines which are running over the same physical machine. Benefits of the virtualization, the first benefit is 
the consolidation. We will understand what do you mean by the consolidation. So, consolidation is the ability to run multiple virtual machines with their operating systems and applications on a single physical platforms. So, again I am giving you uh, illustration that this is a VM virtual machine 1, 2 and so on several virtual machine which comprises of an OS and application they will run on a shared resources. This particular way is called a consolidation in the sense that this physical resource will be shared across multiple virtual machines or many virtual machines. This is called a consolidation because it will decrease the cost. Why? Because the same set of hardware resources cannot be fully utilized by one physical set of operating system and applications. If there are several such virtual machines running, obviously the overall cost will decrease and also will improve the manageability of all these resources and a fewer other uh, electricity bills and other maintenance cost. Hence, the consolidation is one of the key factor to utilize the hardware or the physical resources and this is done by the virtualization and this process is called consolidation. Now, second important benefit of virtualization is the migration. So, that means migrate the operating system in the application from one physical machine to another physical machine. Now, given that the application and its corresponding operating system they are bundled together with the virtual resources and this is called virtual machine. Now, this will be detached from the physical machine. This complete package can be migrated or may be copied to some other place whenever there is a scope of improvement or efficiency or availability or improving the reliability. There are various regions which requires the mobility to migrate the entire virtual machine from one physical machine to another physical machine, thereby uh, increasing the availability and also will improve the reliability and the performance of the system. So, the maintenance here becomes quite automatic and manageable with the migration in place. So, this is another benefit of the virtualization. Third benefit is called security. So, as the operating system and applications are nicely encapsulated in a virtual machine that we have seen in the migration also. Therefore, it becomes an easy to contain any kind of bugs or any kind of malicious behavior to those resources that are available to the virtual machine only and not potentially affect the entire hardware system. Therefore, it ensures the security if multiple virtual machines are basically accessing the same or sharing the same set of hardware in this particular scenario. So, whatever problem is happening at one virtual machine will not suffer to the other virtual machine that is called security and isolation. Now, fourth are some other benefits for example, whenever a debugging is required to be done into a one virtual machine it will not affect the other virtual machines. Hence, this particular debugging or malfunctioning at one virtual machine will be isolated or will not disturb the other virtual machines and the process and the efficiency of the machine or usage will go on. Similarly, it will also provide the affordable support for legacy operating systems. What we mean by this is that the legacy operating systems to support in a new hardware a uh, new hardware some more provisions are being provided by the architects of these particular uh, machines. Now, there is no longer required 
of this kind of things. Why? Because in the virtualization, whatever is the legacy operating system and the applications, they are detached from the physical machine. Therefore, it will provide an affordable support for the legacy operating system in this manner. This is another benefit of virtualization. Now, let us see different models uh, which are basically most prominent for virtualization. There may be, there are various other models available, but we are only going to discuss most important or a prominent model for virtualization. The first one is called the bare metal hypervisor or it is also called the native hypervisor and it is called as a type 1 hypervisor. See in this particular example over the hardware, if the hypervisor sits just above the hardware or a shared physical machine or a physical hardware. Resources to support various different operating system and their corresponding applications. Then it is called the bare metal hypervisor. So, in another way that you can think of for example, there is a Microsoft Windows, this is a Linux. There are different operating systems now running over the same piece of hardware, which was earlier not possible. Either the Windows was running or the Linux was running in this particular mode. Now, all different operating system OSS can run simultaneously over a uh, same piece of hardware. That means, the hardware is shared across different operating system running. That is being possible with the help of the virtualization layer which is called a bare metal hypervisor or it is a native hypervisor. Why? Because it will basically sit just above the physical hardware and that is why it is called a native hypervisor. The different operating systems which will be using the hardware using uh, with the support of bare metal hypervisor, they are called the guest operating systems. Now, second type of virtualization model is called a hosted hypervisor or a type 2 hypervisor. In hosted hypervisor, shared hardware continues to use its own operating system and that is called a host operating system. Now, to support several other operating systems by this particular operating system to share the hardware, it requires another layer which is called virtualization layer which is called a hosted hypervisor. So, now the physical machine comprises of its hardware and the operating system which will be shared across multiple operating system with the support of the hypervisor. So, how the hypervisor sits uh, just above the host operating system and gives and supports the guest operating system. If that is the model, then it is called type 2 hypervisor. It is also called as hosted hypervisor. So, these two models we have seen that is the bare metal or a native hypervisor. The other one is called a hosted hypervisor. Let us see some details inside this particular virtualization model which is called as a bare metal virtualization model. So, in a bare metal hypervisor, this particular hypervisor that is virtual machine monitor sits just above the hardware. So, this is called a bare metal hardware why because this hypervisor directly sits over the hardware and manages the hardware resources. This will also support for several virtual machines. 
with the help of a privileged virtual machine. So, virtual machine monitor the hypervisor manages the hardware resources. This will manage hardware resources and also supports the execution of several or entire virtual machines. Now, there is a concept of privileged service virtual machine to deal with the devices and other configuration and the management task. For example, the devices to share the devices across the guest virtual machines. So, virtual machines would like to access the devices directly. This is done through the service or the privileged virtual machine. This will support the access of devices to the other guest virtual machines. Hence, the virtual machine monitor that is the bare metal hypervisor with the help of service privileged virtual machine continue to support the use of the configurations and management task related to the devices. Now, here we can see that the bare metal virtualization model was ag adopted here in Zen virtualization solution, which is an open source or it is also available with Citrix Zen server. This bare metal virtualization model is also used by the VMware's hypervisor, which is called ESX hypervisor. So, let us see these two industry standard or these two strand, strand, uh, these two hypervisors which are used in the industry, uh, which basically are adopting the bare metal virtualization model. The first one is we are going to discuss is Zen. So, the virtual machines that are run in virtualized environment, they are uh, termed as the domains. The privileged domain is called domain 0 and the guest VMs are referred to as domain U. This is the terminologies which are used in Zen hypervisor. So, Zen is the actual hypervisor and all the drivers are running in the privileged domain that is in the domain 0 that we have uh, earlier explained in the previous slide of bare metal virtualization model. Now, another way of using the bare metal virtualization is seen here in VMware's ESX hypervisor. Now, given that VMware and its hypervisors were first to market, VMware still owns the largest percentage of virtualized server cores. So, these server cores run ESX hypervisor and also provide the drivers to the different devices. They are going to be part of hypervisor to support the third party community of the developers. So, VMware exports a number of APIs. Now, let us see hosted hypervisor is rated or type 2 hypervisor. So, in this model at the lowest level, there is a full fledged operator host operating system that manages all the hardware resources. So, this operating system which is called a hosted operating system sits just above the hardware and its task is to manage the hardware resources. Now, the host operating system will integrate a virtual machine monitor that is responsible for providing the virtual machine with their virtual platform interface. And for managing all of the contact switching schedule. So, let us see the example over here. Now, in the hosted hypervisor example, hypervisor example, the native applications, native applications that means who are using the same operating system can directly be, be supported here in the hosted uh, 
using the host operating system in the hosted hypervisor. Now, in the hosted hypervisor, uh, will use the host operating system or the host operating system will integrate a virtual machine monitor to support the different virtual machines. So, the different virtual machine will have their own guest operating systems, different guest operating systems are being supported by the virtual machine monitor which in turn will basically use the host operating system and this host operating system is having the responsibility of managing the entire hardware. So, the hardware is shared through the host operating system via this hosted hypervisor across all the VMs or across all the, the guest operating systems. So, this particular way uh, is supported uh, and if it is then it is called the hosted hypervisor. The good part of hosted hypervisor is that this host operating system its internal functioning will be leveraged to basically support this virtual machine monitor or the hosted hypervisor so that it will continue to support several virtual machines and at the same point of time it will also continue to use the legacy applications uh, which will uh, try to use the, the physical machine and several application will be sharing the hosted operating system. Similarly, the host operating system will have the support for the devices which are again being available or being shared across all the guest operating system and the native operating system through hosted hypervisor. So, this model is called hosted virtualization model which continues to use its host operating system and through that it will also support the, the virtual uh, machine monitor and this is called hosted virtualization or hosted hypervisor which in turn supports several uh, virtual machines. The example of a hosted virtualization model is seen in a kernel based in a Linux based hypervisor which is called a KVM that is called kernel based virtual machine. it is based on the Linux operating system. So, Linux operating system you know that it sits over the hardware and continues to support its applications and will manage the hardware resources also the device drivers. Now, whenever there is a virtual machines on the Linux platform then this Linux supports or integrates the KVM module that is the kernel virtual machine, the kernel based VM. So, this particular module is being supported by the Linux operating system in turn which will support with the help of QMU. Similarly, it is supported by QMU. So, this Q, QMU is a emulator this is the hardware emulator. So, QMU is a, a hardware emulator that means, this hardware which is available this will be reflected or will be made available to the guest operating system or to the virtual machines and this particular QMU with the help of KVM module will provide the virtual resources. So, QMU is the hardware emulator which will give a complete picture of the hardware uh, resources which are available and uh, this particular KVM module with the QMU are going to support several VMs. This is also going to be important why because this way that is hosted virtualization using the Linux operating system is going to be very useful. Why? Because Linux is an open source community. So, whatever is development taking place in the Linux will continue to be basically used up uh, here in this way of supporting this virtual machines in the Linux operating system. Now, let us see the hardware production levels which are being used here in the 
hypervisors or in the virtual machine monitors. Now you know that there are different commodity hardwares and these commodity hardwares has more than two production levels. For example, x86 architecture has four different production levels which are called as a ring whereas you see that kernel resides in the ring 0. So that means kernel 0 has the highest privilege. So level 0 has the highest privilege whereas the level 3 has the least privilege. So obviously the least privilege that means the applications will basically be uh, dealt at the level 3 or a ring 3 privilege privileges whereas the uh, highest privileges are with the kernel or a core of the operating systems. Now we can see here uh, the, the, uh, the diagram or the illustration of the x86 privilege level architecture without virtualization. Here you can see that the user application are at ring 3 uh, privilege level whereas the highest privilege level that is ring 0 will be uh, assigned to the operating system kernel. So operating system is basically directly managing the hardware resource and supports all the applications. So any user uh, if non-privileged instructions directly can be accessed through the hardware. But the privileged instructions are done through the operating systems here in the normal scenario without any virtualization. Now as far as uh, the processor also supports the virtualization in the form of a trap and emulate uh, instructions or constructs. So the guest instructions that is the guest operating systems executed directly by the hardware now for the non-privileged operations to ensure the efficiency and it can run at the hardware speeds. Now for the privileged operations this will give a trap to the hypervisor that means the guest operating system will generate a trap to the hypervisor and this is like a system call and hypervisor in turn will call on behalf of the guest operating system to execute the privileged instructions. So hypervisor will determine what is to be done if whenever there is a trap the hypervisor will ensure whether it is an illegal operation then it will terminate the virtual machine. If it is a legal operation then it will emulate the behavior the, of the guest operating system which is expecting to be executed at the hardware speed from the hardware. So without any much loss of efficiency uh, with the help of with the support of hypervisor all the privilege instructions are also executed at the guest operating system levels. Let us see the scenario to support this, this particular ring uh, is basically uh, to support this trap and emulate instructions. So all this particular ring 0, 1, 2 they are basically categorized as non-root mode privileged levels. So user can directly execute the hardware in the normal situations so that the application can get the hardware speed or efficiency. Whenever the guest, whenever there is a privilege instructions generated by the guest operating system this will trap to the virtual machine monitor which works at the root level or a root mode privileged level. Now this particular trap in turn will generate a hypervisor call to the hardware and this will be executed. So here we have seen that there are some 17 different privilege instructions which this particular guest operating system requires to be executed with the help of the uh, hypervisors. So there are different mechanisms to support these 17 different privilege instructions, different models of the hypervisors that we will see in the next slide. So this particular concept of binary translation is to rewrite these virtual machine binary to never issue those 17 different trap or instructions. This particular 
idea of binary translation was pioneered by Mendel Rosenblum of Stanford which was commercialized in VMware software and for this work which is which is renamed as reinventing virtualization has conferred an award to Rosenblum as ACM fellow. Now let us see the binary translation how it works which has revolutionized the VMware uh, software and which is having a good uh, market uh, in case of in this virtualization or in a cloud computing scenario. So binary translation here in the goal is that the guest operating system is not modified if it is then it is called a full virtualization and this full virtualization is done through the binary translation. So let us see the approach that whenever such privileged instructions are generated it cannot be known beforehand it will be done or it will be detected at dynamically during the run time. So dynamically at the dynamic time these binary translation has to be done that means those privileged instructions has to be identified by the hypervisor in full virtualization and it has to execute it or it has to process it. If it is not able to execute then it will fail silently. Now for that this binary translation will do. Let us see the steps or the approach of binary translation for such privilege instructions in case of full virtualization where the guest operating system is not modified. So first it will inspect the blocks to be executed. If needed then it will translate to an alternate instruction sequence. For example to emulate the desired behavior possibly even avoiding the trap. So it has to know what instruction what privilege instruction will come in the future just by inspecting the block code. Now otherwise it will run at the hardware speed. So the cache translated blocks are there that means instead of trapping one instruction all the instruction all such instructions are inspected in the blocks and they will be given at one go that is the batches are being given to run at the hardware speed. That is all done in the binary translation to make the efficient use of it and also the cache will translate the blocks to amortize the translation cost for several instructions if they are best so, the so that particular translation cost will be reduced in this manner. So in contrast to the full virtualization there is another method of virtualization which is called a para virtualization. Let us see the goal of para virtualization. Goal is basically the performance it will it will give up on unmodified guest. So the guest is no longer unmodified so guest operating systems are to be modified to basically get the performance of this particular privilege instructions translation and execution at a higher efficiency. So the approach of a para virtualization is to modify the guest operating system for example this is the guest operating system only a little portion of the guest operating system is modified but as far as the APIs are concerned which are supporting different applications they are not modified then in some internal part is modified which is interfacing with the hypervisors. So that means only the privileged instructions which are required to be directly access to the hardware is being modified. Now in this particular approach which is called a para virtualization where the guest operating system is a little modified so that all the applications which are running uh, in this particular model knows that it is running the virtualized in a virtualized scenario. So this means that it makes an explicit call to the hypervisor and this is called a hypervisor call. So it will using this modified it will make a hyper call. 
So, hyper calls are like system calls and they are having the packaged context information specify the desired hyper, hyper calls and then it will trap to the virtual machine monitor that is the hypervisor. Example of this particular para virtualization is done in the Zen uh, supported by the Citrix. Now, let us see how much in param virtualization, what is the percentage of guest operating system code that need to be modified in the para virtualization. It is more than it is 50 percent means half of the code is of the guest operating system is to be modified or it is less than 50 percent that is 30 percent code is to be modified or even it is lesser than 10 percent or it is less than 2 percent. So, only less than 2 percent code is modified in para virtualization. So, it is, so it is, it is a doable it is and this particular proof is given in Zen para virtualized hypervisor. Memory virtualization to run multiple virtual machines on a single machine one has to virtualize the memory management unit to support the guest operating systems. The virtual machine monitor is responsible for mapping the guest physical memory to the actual machine memory and it uses the shadow paste tables to accelerate the mapping. Virtual machine monitor uses translation look aside buffer hardware to map the virtual memory directly to the physical to the machine memory to avoid the two level of translation on every access. So, let us see through a uh, example that whenever the guest operating system give a memory address and this particular memory address will be taken by the hypervisor. So, the guest operating system will have the virtual address and he has its view of the physical address. This physical address when it is given to the hypervisor because hypervisor is actually managing the hardware or the memory let us say. So, this particular physical address is to be translated into the memory into the machine address. So, this particular there are two levels. So, virtual address is to be translated into the physical address this is done by the guest operating system. This particular physical address will be translated to the machine address and this is to be done with by the hypervisor. So, just see that there are two indirection now here will be added over here hence this memory operation becomes slow. Now, let us see how this efficiency aspect is being covered here in the memory virtualization. So, the virtual machine monitor will use a concept which is called the shadow paste table. So, now there are two paste tables one is called sh shadow paste table which will be maintained by the hypervisor and there will be a physical paste table which will be maintained by the hardware. <coughs> if both are same then basically the efficiency will be achieved at the hypervisor level itself. So, virtual machine monitor uses the translation look aside buffer hardware to map the virtual memory directly to the machine memory to avoid two levels of translation on every axis. So, using TLB the virtual address 
is directly translated into the to the machine address with the help of tlp by the hypervisor now it may be possible that translation look aside buffer which is a cache will not have the information about this particular virtual address then it will have a miss then it will go into a physical or a paste table and then it will be resolved by the paste table and in that process it will be updated the translation let us see this particular method of using the shadow paste table so this particular shadow paste table uh, <coughs> will be maintained by uh, uh, this one will be maintained by the virtual machine monitor so here whenever there is a virtual address given by the guest operating system so this particular hardware is a part of virtual machine monitor so it will directly give <coughs> the machine address so it will have a look into the translation look aside buffer that is a cache for that corresponding virtual address and if it is there then it will directly generate the machine address so this particular tlb or the so basically otherwise it will access to the paste table cpu uses the paste table for the address translation and the hardware paste table which is there with the cpu is really the the shadow paste table which will be maintained uh, uh, by the virtual machine monitor if both are same then basically there will be a direct hit otherwise if there is a miss then from the physical translation that information is basically stored in the shadow paste table so that the future uh, accesses to that virtual virtual addresses can be fast enough so in this way the vir memory virtualization achieves an efficiency as far as now let us see the memory virtualization in the case of a full virtualization full virtualization means that the guest operating system is not modified that means the virtual addresses are directly given virtual addresses which are converted by the guest operating systems physical address and that is given to the hypervisor so there are three different levels as i told you the virtual address physical address this will be translated in the guest operating system versus this physical address versus machine address this will be translated by the hypervisor so basically in full virtualization the hypervisor has to leverage the hardware knowledge of of machine or, or a memory management unit and translation look aside buffer as i told you earlier so there are two options option 1 says that the guest operating system will have its paste table which will translate into a physical address but this physical address is different than the machine address so but that information is having at the hypervisor level in the full virtualization so this physical address will be translated into the machine address but as we have seen that this particular two level translation is too expensive and the memory accesses becomes slower so this particular uh, hardware example we can see over here this is the virtual machine one virtual machine two they have their uh, virtual uh, addresses which are generated by the the processes and they can translate into the physical memory virtual memory physical memory when this physical memory or physical addresses are given then basically the hypervisor comes in between and it will translate into the machine address the hardware which in the previous slide we have seen that it will be used to accelerate this the other option is that the guest page table that is when the guest is doing from virtual address to the physical address translation that is done through the guest page table is it really required so hypervisor will now use its 
shadow paste table which will directly translate the virtual address into the machine address. Hence, this particular guest paste table can be avoided, this particular translation can be avoided directly with this particular <coughs> hypervisor. So, hyper for this the hypervisor maintains a consistence consistency between the shadow paste table and the paste table which is there with the CPU or the hardware. So, both are we have seen in the previous example how they are going to be uh, updated so that the consistency between shadow paste table and paste table is maintained so that so that the virtual address can directly be translated into the machine address in most of the cases. Now, in case of para virtualization let us see the memory virtualization how it will takes place. Now, in para virtualization the guest is aware of the that it is running in the virtualized scenario that means, the guest operating system will be modified a little bit. So, that these tables which hypervisor was earlier doing in full virtualization will be available at the guest operating system. So, guest operating system will have something called shadow paste table. So, uh, directly it can be translated with the help of hypervisor calls. So, now the thing is here explicitly it will register the paste table with the hypervisor. So, the paste table will be registered with the hypervisor. Now, the hypervisor can batch the paste table updates to reduce virtual memory exist and this will also have the other optimizations by way of batching it together. Now, as far as to maintain the paste table at the guest operating system level, it will issue the hyper calls to create the paste table and to switch the paste table and to update the paste table. So, all these hyper calls will continue to maintain the consistent paste table at all the guest operating system levels. Now, here this particular overhead will be reduced and uh, this will make a more efficient way to access the memory using para virtualization. Now, we are going to see the device virtualization. After looking up the CPU and memory virtualization, which is mostly standardized as far as the interfaces are concerned and instruction set architecture given the instru instruction set architecture, these are all standardized and they are less diverse also. So, uh, CPU and uh, memory virtualization has uh, uh, proper algorithm and proper shape and different models basically supports that. Now, for the devices, devices are having high diversity and also all the devices lacks in the standard specification interfaces and the behavior. So, there is no common standard which basically will follow for all the devices. So, different devices, different type of devices will have its own standards and also there are different diversity as I told you different type of devices will have different behaviors. So, as far as device virtualization is concerned, it is not so straightforward like we have seen using the techniques uh, for the CPU and the memory. So, we are going to see the device, the three different key models for the virtualization of devices. They are the pass through model, hypervisor, direct model, split device driver model. Let us see one by one all three different type of models used in the device virtualization. Now, first model is called pass through model. Here, the approach is that virtual machine monitor. Uh, level configures the devices and device access permissions to be given to the guest virtual machines to access the devices. So, virtual machines are provided with the exclusive access to the devices with the support of virtual machine monitor, which basically will have its management routine, which will uh, basically supports this particular direct access which will bypass the virtual machine hypervisor. So, that the guest operating systems 
the guest virtual machines can directly access the devices and uh, in an efficient manner. The device sharing is very difficult in this particular scenario. So, virtual machine monitor must have exact type of device as what the virtual machine expects. Now, here the virtual machine migration is a tricky why because the, the, the drivers of guest virtual machines or a guest operating system directly are accessing or tied up with the devices. So, the migration is a more difficult or a tricky. So, in the next model we will see how this problem is going to be solved. Hypervisor direct model approach virtual machine monitor intercepts all device accesses. Emulate the device operations in the sense it will translate to the generic IO operations and traverse the virtual machine monitor resident IO stack invoke virtual machine monitor resident driver and it will allow the access that means the devices are sometimes or it is virtualized. So, the guest operating system is supporting or is being supported by the proper way of generic device operations through the virtual machine monitor. The key benefits here is that virtual machine is decoupled from the physical device unlike in the previous method which we have seen. And this will support the sharing migration uh, dealing with the device specifies. Now, downside of the model is that the devices are accessed through the virtual machine monitor hence it will give it will add to the latency for the devices for the device operations in the virtual machine accesses to the devices. So, device driver ecosystem is the adding the complexity in the hypervisor level. Now, the next method is called split device driver method. Here the device access control is split between the front end driver in the guest VM and back end driver in the service VM or the host. Let us see through this particular example. This device access control is split into two parts. The first one is called front end device driver in the guest VM that is through the device API. The other one is called back end device driver in the service VM. So, service VM as you know that it is called domain 0 and the guest VM or the guest operating system or the VMs is called domain U. Now, here this particular split device driver model is limited to the para virtualized guest operating system. Why? Because this is going to be para virtualized. Now, here it will eliminate the emulation overhead and it will allow for better management of the shared devices because hypervisor will support the guest operating system through the front end device drivers and also the service VM that is the privileged VM which will provide the back end device driver together they will basically allow to access the device driver directly. So, with this split device driver model all the important aspects that is the migration is possible here in this case and also it will support using para virtualized method the device accesses are being uh, given to the to the virtual machines so that they may uh, access it efficiently so conclusion in this lecture we have defined virtualization and discussed the main virtualized virtualization approaches we have also described the processor virtualization memory virtualization and device virtualization used for virtualized solutions and also we have shown some of the solutions such as Zen, KVM and VMware.
virtualization methods or hypervisors. Thank you.